to Bunny's Designs. Um, thought I would. I've been colouring napkins then with watercolour, um, and I wanted to, to um, show. <coughs> Excuse me, how I do this. I've been really poorly for a few days in bed, and I've uh, not really recovered. But I, I need to do this, and I'm desperate to send it off. But I wanted to do a video about it first because um, I've never done it before. Um, and I what had intended to go out into the garden and paint the. Uh, I have hundreds of bud budlier trees in the garden. We have a half acre garden. And I let them run wild, so it's all like butterflies. And <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So I wanted to. Uh, I wanted to go in the garden and paint um, a beautiful um, journal page uh, of budliers and the butterflies and the bees and. Uh, um, Unfortunately, this hasn't happened, so I wanted to do this, uh, and I thought, well, this would be really unusual, so I, I, I wanted to do this originally, then I thought, no, no, it's such, it's such a beautiful day, uh, but I really can't go outside, I've been, whinge, <laughs> uh, whinge, I've been in bed for a few days, so um, you'll have to forgive me if I start coughing, because I haven't taken any asthma pills. Excuse me, I'll have to keep drinking water. So I've put it on, um, what I've done is I've got a piece of sketchbook paper. Now it hasn't got the, it's acid free, it doesn't have the water brush on it. But what the way I watercolour, I, uh, that's ink I think, but I watercolour quite dry. So I can watercolour on anything, even on a napkin. Um, I've done a watercolouring on a single piece of napkin. And I was playing with the. That was just, that was the experiment. See if it worked. Um, that was the first attempt, and then the second attempt. Um, I was playing with some deeper colours. So that was the third attempt. The second one, which has seemed to have completely disappeared. Oh, the se this is the second one. I was trying to play a bit more with with a how a a rose or a flower would really look. So I was playing with colour and depth um, and to make it look more realistic and more like a watercolour. So I've, <coughs> I've taken my piece of paper, I've split the napkin into its single sheet and I have Oh hi, so you'll have to forgive me, I'll take my glasses off. Um, I didn't expect anybody to join me today because I didn't feel very well, but I wanted to make the video. I can't make up the name because I take my glasses off. I'm not very good with uh, there's a lack as well. Little Phantom. Hi, um, what I was doing with the, the napkins, um, <coughs> no, do it, excuse me. I'm full of a flu bug or something. I've been in bed for days. But I took my piece of paper um, and I stuck the napkin down. I didn't know if I'd done it the right way. I used um, an old credit card and a uh, multimat. I don't know if that will show. I changed my lighting because I tried to dry it with the lights. So that's now dried because I couldn't put the hair dry on because of the little dog. Um, so that's dried, but it's still damp in corners. So I was going to cut round it. <coughs> oh, just glasses, glasses. The thing is, you need your glasses to find your glasses. Oh, thank you. I, uh, I was, I, I, I just can't stay in bed anymore. <laughs> Needed to do something. Uh, and I really wanted to get this done, so I'm going to cut round the edges really carefully because I think I should have pulled it apart when it was um, when it was wet, but I didn't. So if I go around the edges now, I'm hoping I can still do watercolor watercoloring on it, but I think with the multi mat it may have to be. Um, acrylics but I paint in acrylics the same way as I paint in watercolours I'm rather boring 
I paint um, the, the all the consistency is all normally like uh, unless I'm watercolouring on a napkin then I have to be really dry but normally it's uh, like single cream I don't think I'm doing a very good job at this can't really see what I'm doing the only thing you've got to remember is not to get it near your water pot because it completely disintegrates so as I say I'm not sure the multi mats on top, it, it seems quite, um, it doesn't seem like it's its a glossy, I know it's matte, but it doesn't seem like it's done anything to the napkin, too drastic. Uh, years ago at college what we used to do is, <coughs> sorry my voice is a bit ugh, um, we used to use glue um, and we used to watercolour, um, we used glue and we used it um, well, we didn't have Mod Podge, but it, it, what for decoupage and for for doing other things. Excuse me, but I didn't think, um, and I know that you can't watercolor on the top of that. Uh, but this, um, I'm not sure if it'll work, so I have to try it. And the other thing, I think I've done this before actually, because they look like drops of the hyd the hydrus. So what I thought I'd use, I can't find my little book. I've been pulling, everything's been moved around. So I thought, this is she, and I can't find them now, or they're right in front of me. I thought what I would do, is I would use my little bottles of hydrous watercolours. Because they're very intense, uh, and they're very pretty colours. Um, I have them in a, in a box with sorts of other things. I wanted, my husband's gone to Manchester today to see his mother and I wanted to go to the art shop there's two art shops in Manchester but I really didn't have the energy so um, I thought I must get this finished and done as I received it's for an art swap and I received mine and I wanted to go painting outside at the garden uh, that we have the Budleyers out and I thought oh that would be fantastic so um, I've been waiting to get better to go and do this um, uh, sorry I, um, <laughs> I think I should take some some drugs for this uh, flu but hey ho um, and I thought I'd get outside and paint these buddleias and it would be a lovely sunny uh, journal page but unfortunately um, that didn't happen and I was going to do this and I thought well that would be quite quite summery and quite sweet and very different so um, we'll see how it goes so what I, I th I'm pretty sure that's what I've done so all you do is you shake the bottles up this is full of colour and they're really really vibrant so if I turn that over and put it there because I'm actually going to so I have a water pot on a serviette the dog hair goodness gracious um, I have my little pot there and I'm going to put a drop in each one, just one drop and the colours for one drop is, uh, is really really I'm glad you think it's I don't know if it's going to work or not in fact that's what I should have done at least tested it didn't do that did I might not work, I'm pretty sure it will uh, but if it doesn't, I'll just get the acrylics out. And I haven't wasted these because they will dry and then they'll be in this little pot. I've made um, a little book of watercolours and on the plastic sleeves I've put a drop of this colour. And you do get quite a lot of colour from one drop. <coughs> I would try and talk louder. Now I normally do the light blue with blue and the dark with dark because you only really need six colours but I'm kind of, uh, I can't think straight today, I'm really sorry. <laughs> My, uh, you don't only need really two colours, you need a, a, a cool lemon and a warm lemon, a cool blue and a warm blue. And that's black so I don't need that. That's burnt umber, I don't think I need that either because I do need 
this one. This is this is uh, yellow ochre, um, used by everybody. And there is a there is a green, but I don't think I like the green. Just pop it there. Okay. Uh, and I will put the brown out. The uh, Venetian brown. Yes, I, I I do kind of bang on about my little book, but I love it. It's it's my favourite thing on the planet. I have to say, I do love it. I shouldn't say that when I've got children. Should I really? but <laughs> apart from the children and the husband. So I normally work, especially with something this fine, in a five zero or a ten zero. Oh, I've got one that's got a fork in it. That means unless I've broken both of them now. That's a ten zero. That's a better one. And there's a five zero. And there's a two I've been using. Oh, that's a ten zero as well. That's the one that doesn't work very well. Um, just find the find the ten zero. I can't find the five zero. There it is. I like working with these long riggers because they're very fine, but they do hold, th they're damp, and they hold the damp water quite well. And these are some of the other ones that I use, they do so they work quite well. Uh, quite damp, so I'm, I'm not sure if this is going to work, but we'll have a go with it. So I get rid of all those. I thought about zooming in, I do have this little one as well. This is a, I think I bought this in Paris. This is a nice one. There is a lovely shop in London, um, and it's all wonky floorboards and all old drawers that they pull out and they have hundreds of everything in it. Oh, I just love it. Is it Cornelius? I can't remember what it's called. Uh, no, I think that's from Harry Potter. Um, but that's a fantastic little shop as well. But in Manchester, there's a couple of nice shops. Yes, I mean, th I've got all these. I mean, even I've got all these little bottles here. I can hardly ha hold because my hand's poorly. Um, when really, don't know if I've got the purple out. Um, when really, um, they're all, all the inks are fitted into here. But then the little book holds kind of everything else as well. So I am a bit obsessed with my little book. Uh, what I thought I might do, I've got to take my glasses off. So I apologise, I can't see. I might try and zoom in a little bit. No, I think I could have frozen. Because I just pressed the wrong button, so I do apologise. You have to bear with me a minute. I think, <coughs> um, I think I've just pressed the wrong button on the phone. Yes, I did. But, oops, I pressed it. Oh, sorry about that. So, hi. See if I can zoom in. And it will focus, that would be fantastic. No, no, please, please ask anything you want. Um, I will, I've got my glasses on, I can't know. No, ask anything you want, because that's what, that's what I'm here for, is people to watch this lunatic painting, napkins. <laughs> I'm hoping it's going to focus, but it's maybe... So let me see if it will work. So I've just had to take my glasses for a second so I can uh, make a, a nice green. So I'm actually going to do this in a traditional watercolour way, which I haven't done for a while. So if I just, I'm pretty sure that those dots look like the other dots on the other side. So that, so I could probably touch um, the blue, and it just comes straight back to being colour again. So they do work just by dropping them onto, there is a smaller little palette, I think you can buy them that one. Um, should take some yellow first actually. And the other thing I haven't got, <coughs> excuse me, is a test paper. Test paper somewhere. Oh. Sorry about the noises. 
uh, I'm on my own because they've, they've all gone away so the dogs are in the other room on their own and normally they sleep all day but uh, just sometimes they decide to wander around I do need to test the colour on something I'll do so just give it a bit of a test it is a bit of a pale colour so that's quite good because if I make a mess that's quite nice um, so I'm just going to tease that into there and I'm not sure if it's just sitting on top just bear with me two seconds the chat's disappeared Right, so is that, <coughs> is that better, do we think? It does seem to be drying, it doesn't seem to be. So maybe you can use, you see that? Maybe you can use uh, watercolour on top of this the studio map medium then it says for sealing art I've never used it before but I'm pretty sure that that's dry so it has it actually has stayed now I wonder if it would try it with a slightly <coughs> slightly deeper colour since you've got these beautiful colours, um, I haven't really got the pot, the water pot that I need for a traditional watercolour. Because um, you do have to have. I'm I'm used to working. Um, not quite as as damp as this. Touch of blue. Use a different blue. That's a bit more vivid, that one. So, <coughs> because this is dark, if I just pull that lamp up a bit, pull that lamp up a bit, do you think that looks okay? It should be there somewhere. There, that's where it is, isn't it? Does that look okay? I'll just drop the colour in. It seems to sit on top first and then it seems to sink in a little bit. So maybe because I had such a very light, a light coat, <coughs> excuse me, it's gone in. seems to have dried as well. So you could use it like a traditional watercolour and then I would presume once it's dried you'd go over the top again to seal it and then that would seal it. I don't think it's a bit bubbly there. I don't like the fact that it's a bit maybe if I did a darker background <coughs> I'm sorry, I, I seem to be off camera. I do apologise. Is that any better? It's easier than when there's no multi mat on it. <coughs> Excuse me. When when it's just the napkin, it it's it's very you've got to be very careful, whereas this is a little bit more forgiving. I'm still working quite dry though, not not as wet. Uh, not a traditional watercolour, um, like I normally do, just kind of having just enough water in the brush to get the paintbrush to look like a 
proper watercolour. But whether it'll dry or not, I'm, I'm not. <coughs> excuse me, I'm really not 100% sure if it'll dry. Yes, the, the napkin, it, it just really is very, very tricky. You've got to be really careful. Um, whereas the, with the mat on it, it's just like doing a normal photocopy. Because I love photocopying things. I photocopy the napkin and it looks really good. I'm trying to draw under my glasses. Look under my glasses to draw. So it's Ideal. I do hope that I'm in frame. Yes, I think it's. I think it will. Um, it, it it doesn't dry as quickly because normally the napkin you can touch it almost straight away. My lighting isn't very good because I'm holding it but uh, I do like these hydras they are lovely colours to work with find it quite therapeutic it's not it's not stressful if I had to get all the acrylics out and start mixing colors it would drive me a little bit insane I'm a bit of a lazy girl and I do like um, if I can turn this other lamp nearer um, so that's a quite neat watercolour. Um, so what else can I do? Um, this is quite a nice. I don't like the rough edges though, I must admit. I don't think I've done it properly. Yes, the, vi the hydrus. I mean this is the palette, that's all I've done. I had the green and then I've just touched the brown. Uh, but they are really vibrant and the colours look like I haven't even touched them so they um, and again I like that as a tight Yorkshire lass you get a lot of money a lot of uh, a drop goes a long way I should say <laughs> and from those colours uh, you could mix you traditionally you need uh, the two blues now this is the wrong blue um, you need something like um, an ultramarine which is a warm a warm blue and then you need um, a cool blue like a cobalt blue so all you have to do in any of uh, any kind of painting is get the two that you can mix together is is two of each color um, you want a crimson red and then you want an orangey red um, that's too pink actually because that's the pinky one uh, so you don't really need an orange. You only need six to seven colours. Uh, I always buy the brown. I love uh, a nut brown because a nut brown. Oh, I do apologise. Sorry, <laughs> I can't believe the phone's ringing. Nobody ever rings me. It's probably my husband saying that they've got to Manchester safe because I hate motorways. <laughs> Yes, I might do a colour chart actually because um, because all this about you need 72 of this and 100 of this and you don't really. Um, there isn't a colour I can't mix. I say I did I, I, the green and the the blues that were in a set that I bought. 
but I would have um, I would have normally just bought um, the, the two blues, two yellows, uh, a lemony yellow, which is here, and the yellow ochre. Um, and you want to say cool and warm, and then there's nothing that you can't mix. Um, I don't normally feel like I want to do this, but when I use the hydras in my little book, it just lends itself to a little bit of water, a drop of water. Um, I normally have like, the, the cap off a little bottle, and that's normally enough for me. Uh, and even, even watering here, I've only used, um, I didn't mix with a large paintbrush. I am just mixing with, um, I'm, ju I'm only mixing with a couple of, a couple of uh, paintbrushes full and it's a 10 zero. So even now it's still not, it, it comes across as the watercolor, but it's not, I'm not using it as a watercolor. Um, I, it's what I call watercoloring. It's water. It's it's using water, but just taking the colours to to just a damp consistency, so you can work with them. So if I pull that back a smidgen more, I'll just leave that flat for a second. Um, I'll just see what other colours I can I can come out with, and then always have a a, a scruffy piece of paper to just because that's the other thing when you're making your own colours, you don't know what they're doing. Um, so that's quite a nice pink. So I might just drop that into there. And then you can always go back into it and just drop in some really vivid colours if you wanted. I hope this isn't like watching paint dry. <laughs> It is a lot easier to work with it once you've covered it in multimat, I have to say. Um, I'm not afraid of it going completely loopy on me. Mm, but traditionally watercolours, if it's wet it will run, which it has done. It's, uh, it's a strange way of working, but it seems to be... Uh, you can work a lot wetter, and you can see it actually sitting on top there. Well, what, yeah, I, I tend, to, uh, as I call it, watercolouring, but really it's just colouring with a brush. When you do traditional watercolours, you you wet the whole page and then you drop the colours in and you let them do. And this is more, I use my paintbrush um, like I use um, a marker, but I can't use, or a pencil, I can't use these things anymore. I'm going to stay away from that because that looks a little bit too damp. I'm going to stay away from that because it will bleed otherwise. Because it is still quite wet, it hasn't dried. I haven't found the perfect spot yet. But I think even if you can get an odd colour that's not um, some some difference in the in the petals, then you have. So if I go over here and do this one. Um, that, that still hasn't dried, I don't think. Try a tiny drop into there. It's quite good when you're uh, colouring in somebody else's designs because they've they've put the dark um, the dark lines in for you, so it gives you some idea. give you some idea. I'll just finish this and then I'll, I'll lift it up a little bit. See if I can drop the original colour in. I think these hydras are about, I think they're about four or five pounds, um, but there's an awful lot of colour in there. For traditional watercolours I think you do spend, uh, I think some reds are about 20 odd pounds. So. And I think these are professional watercolours there. I quite like the fit, the um, I like the deeper colours actually, which
which is something that I don't normally do. It is the same colour, yes, it's just where the light hits it. Um, it's just where the light hits it. I don't think I've got the multivat on quite as, as even as I should have done because that seems to be reacting more like a, a napkin than it should do. Yeah, I do like when you're colouring in, the, most of the colouring in books, they expect you just to colour in, not blend. Um, this is more like, sorry, this is more like blending. So it's, um, it's kind of, uh, is that? more like a flower. Now the little flower will probably be a little bit darker. So you could probably start with a bit more colour. It's still tricky working on it, even with the multimat, but it is it is a lot better. It's a lot more forgiving. Uh, when you touch the tissue, this the the wet this wet this paint that's um, paintbrushes is quite is a lot wetter than I would normally work. If you drop that amount when you on an odd napkin, it would kind of just go. Yes, it's it's definitely an experiment, <laughs> experiment, but I hope it looks okay at the end. Um, now that's a different flower, so I thought they might do a um, an orangey colour, yellow flower there. Again, I keep I always have a little piece of paper just to, to practice on. Even using the colours, neat. It's still quite. It's still quite pretty. It's still quite nice and, and it's still very quick. I can't do with blending, um, even with watercolours. It, it, it's, it's too much for me. I just like to stroke the petal because my hands um, will just hold a paintbrush and, and there's no pressure. So, And it's very quick um, and then you can just drop a a deeper amount of colour in the inside if you wanted to. Drop more water on the outside. So every layer is getting paler and paler. Because more and more light's hitting. I think that's how it works. I never seem to finish the end of my sentences. I do apologise. I think it's the fibromyalgia that does that. People call it brain fog. <laughs> definitely does something. But I think it's still still fairly quick. Um, and I said there's no way I could blend pencils. Um, I just I just I just know that well I well I could, I tell a lie. I could, but then I wouldn't be able to do anything for days on end. So I've really watered that down now. And I do like sometimes it looking like a watercolour. <laughs> is that what it is? Oh, right. <laughs> Probably. I'm terrible. I, I kind of just open my mouth and it comes out. I'm terrible. Um... I've always, I've always, because I think, I, I don't know, I, my husband will sit there for 10 minutes and then he'll, he'll answer me and I go, I think if you've, if you've waited to answer me, you're lying. <laughs> but that's just me. Now I think that curl could be either lighter or darker. I mean, this is still quite quick and this is a size 10 zero pencil, um, paintbrush, which is quite small. And if it dries and it's too pale, you can always go over it again. And um, that's what watercolorists do. They 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 put their color on. They work from light to dark. Um, 
whereas oils and acrylic all work dark to light. And I work both. So that seems to be quite a nice lemon colour. I hope it's in focus. I wish there was some way I could. But if I pull it up then the light's not as good. And I can only see half my half my half my page. So because that's quite No, it doesn't I wonder what else I've got that would I wonder if it would focus on something that was really coloured bright. Yes, I'm just going to try try and put something in front of it and see if that works better. Um, so I shall go back to the green now. And put this green underneath, which will make the lemon pop out a little bit better because it doesn't look lemon at the minute. It looks rather washed out. I had hoped to use a different green, but I do quite like that one. Um, I might just give it a touch of a shadow, maybe. Just add a little bit more of the deep blue. I think I prefer that one actually. Oh, that's good. But I still think it's quite quick. Thank you. I still think it's 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 quite it's quick, considering that you are creating probably five or six different shades. Um, so I shall do the stem next. I'll put that at that side, that might be better. Go back to the brown, do the stem. Make it maybe a greeny brown. I have these lovely felt pens but I can't use them because I can't grip for so long. Just try to add some water to that and see if that will blend out a little bit. It does tend to blend out a little bit. I hope that's a bit better. It seems to be a lot more multi-mat on that bit. is I think it has a lot to do with how the multi-mat is actually on the, on the napkin. thing I don't like about this kind of colouring is the uh, can't find a pink it's a purple there, that's quite a nice colour but I don't know in nature if there's a purple flower. So, thank you. Uh, mm, a slight problem with the water. What should I put to pink out? Maybe I didn't. So, play with the pink a bit and see if we can get a nice 
a vivid pink, is that what I think it might work? Watering down quite a lot. Sorry about the ti the, uh, the pa patch of tiny feet. Uh, one of the little monsters has woken up. So if I drop deep colour in the middle. Then we can kind of put that down a little bit. So I wasn't sure if I wanted to do a background, but I, I may do a background. Um, I think acrylics probably would go on a lot better. Sorry, is that better? Have I moved? What if I've moved the microphone? I'll take a drink of water so I can talk louder. Is that any better? I wonder if it's frozen. Maybe I've stopped talking. Yes, I don't think this is working. Oh, you don't. Sorry, you don't hear the little feet. No, they've gone back in the dog beds now. Normally, they don't move. They will sleep all day because two of them are rather old. But the little one um, puddles about a bit, and they're normally really good all day. They just sleep. They've, they say they're quite old. They're rescued, and we've had them ten years, so they are, they are quite old. Um, I don't like the fact that this pink is just sitting on top like this. It's like it's a wax resist. So perhaps I may have to think about acrylics, maybe. The lemon went on lovely, but I must have obviously got some more multi-matte at this end. And uh, I don't like the way it looks. It looks like it's been on uh, wax, so I'm not really happy with that. That's a good age, he's 12 for a cat. <laughs> but they don't do very much at that age, do they? They're not like kittens, they just sit. They just sit and sleep in the sun. Yeah, I'm not happy with that, I have to say. The the red was dried quite nice. Yeah, I don't think it does. The pink definitely hasn't. Um, so I'll probably have to rethink the watercolours. Because I, I really wanted to watercolour it first. But then I wasn't sure if it would go down. So what I'm going to do is, I might just not... I wonder if I should try to put this one on a napkin, the one that I've already started. Because that's quite a nice one, is that one? Hmm. Or perhaps colour it in something else. I might have to try acrylics. I mean, it does look alright, it does look like a traditional watercolour. Hold it close up. It does look like a traditional watercolour. But I'm not happy with it really. I don't think. I suppose I could carry on and then see see what happens. Um I do like dropping the colour in the bottom first, though that looks quite. That does look quite nice. I mean, uh, this is how I thought it would react to begin with. My memory of this. I thought it would. <laughs> yeah, 
Yes, it can be. I suppose they do wax resist on watercolours, don't they? They do all sorts of watercolours. But it does dry. It, it does dry. And it dries fairly quickly, whereas uh, normally I think you have to leave things for a longer time. But again, these are so vibrant. It is a quick way of working, and I'm, I, I do like to work quickly. I can't w spend days and days and days on things. Um, I like things to be done, um, and I like. I can't wait for anything. <laughs> I'm terrible. So I've put some extra colour in that one, so I might go back and just see if I can tease some dark colour. Sometimes if you mess about with it too much, then you spoil it. I still think it's still for, it's quicker than blending with pencils and markers. It's still a lot quicker, and not too much fussing about as well. I can't do with uh, even blending watercolors. It, it drives me insane. I put I put the color down. I use a drop of water, and then that's it. So that is quite rather a, a pinky pink <laughs> rose. Is that? So if I make the other one a paler little flower next to it. I really wanted a butterfly on here as well, but I may draw one in yet. I have a squeaky chair, so <laughs> it's quite old, it's a bit like me, it's a bit decrepit, but it's comfy. So I may as well use the same green, I don't normally do that, but because I want some continuity in all the, the flowers together. I was hoping it would focus on some words as well. So, um, well, I do think that leaf may be a different green. I think we'll make a different green now. Um, it's the only thing I don't like about watercolours, you run out of space. And I'm not one for going to wash my brush out either. Yeah, we have comfy chairs. Um, so I, I do quite like that lemon, but if I'm not happy with it, I can go over it. What I could do is another one, but I, I may, I think I may decide to use acrylics. Um, But it's worked better than I thought it would. I, I, I honestly, at the back of my mind, thought, not really sure that it would work, but I would give it a go. But uh, it, as I say, it has worked a lot better than I thought it would. But I do like the design. Oh, do you think so? Thank you turn that round because I was going to do this leaf next. If we can keep it in focus. It does seem to give a nice effect. Um, I do need a different green though. Just test that. Oh, that's more traditional rose colour green now. 
I'm not sure about the background. Sometimes something tells me that a dark background will be quite nice. And it would make the flowers, but then it wouldn't be summery. This has got to be kind of summery. But it can turn into mixed media, it doesn't have to be a watercolour, does it? Hi Lilith, have I pronounced that correctly? I do apologise, I can't see very well. We're just trying to um, watercolour. Uh, I was, I put a napkin on a piece of um, good quality sketch paper and covered it in multi matte and then I wanted to try and watercolour over the top so it's not been a complete disaster but it's 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 slightly easier to work with being um, it's slightly easy to work with but the multi matte is stopping quite a lot of uh, colour soaking in so it, you can work slightly wetter as a more traditional watercolour and I always thought that these curled ones back here were dark green so those green um, trying to make it look like a proper floral summer summer design I hope that's still in focus oops trying to think of the colours. Um, there wouldn't really be a purple one, but I think that's probably going to be orange. But I did like the blue on this one. This is the, the serviette as its original. And I did like the purple one. But actually, I quite like that colour. Uh, and the orange one, that's quite a nice one as well. I'll see if I can replicate. I'll see if I can replicate that orangey colour without doing too much. Oops, that's not good. That's the one thing I do not like about watercolours. You. Mm -hmm. on there. Just a touch darker. And make it. Oh really? I've never heard of that. I've never heard of that. I've never heard of that. That looks. Um, I'm using these uh, really highly pigmented hydrous watercolours, and they seem to be. Uh, they are very vibrant, and so I've actually turned them down quite a lot. Um, which one was I going to do? I was going to do that one, wasn't I? So if I'm still in frame. I'll just move that across a bit. Got my scrappy bit of paper. So I wonder if I'm. Lemony than than orangey, but I'll do the next one lemon. I wondered how your brushes stand up to that because I didn't think multi matte was quite good for your brushes. Um, I do tend to get I like to get my money's worth out of my brushes. I have to say, 
and I stopped buying expensive ones, I buy medium priced ones, but normally the thin ones are cheap anyway because they don't have as many natural hairs in them um, than the other ones do. I would presume then if they use that instead of putting a, a, a varnish on it or a coat on it when they've finished, I would think traditional watercolours would turn in the grave if they heard that. This rogue leaf, which uh, petal, which I think will be called paler. So that's the little flower that I've just done there. I still want an orange, so I shall use that yellow and just put a drop. Of an orange colour, and then water it down a bit. Yeah, it's still like wax resist there. I've obviously got quite a lot of multi mat on it. It's easier to colour, but it doesn't give a nice effect really. But this is the first time I've ever stuck a napkin down, so I just I didn't really know how it would go. It's just an experiment. I was too ill ready to go out and paint in the garden. So it proves you can uh, not take any notice of what people tell you about things and just get on with them. <laughs> it's like the ink tens. They say that once you've wet the palette, it won't work, but it's been working for me for a couple of years. So I think you have to try these things. Um, I don't think if you told anybody you wanted to watercolour over the top of matte medium that you'd get away with it, but it's not too bad. I hope you found that interesting. Um, I may do another one, but I think I may do that in acrylics, I think. Acrylics are a little bit older. So I've got to remember that that little bud there is the same colour as the flower there. Maybe drop just a t touch of that was too much. Now I've changed it now. It's now a different one. I do like to, t to keep turning my pages. So we're going to make a different green now. Hmm, that's a deeper green, is that one, I think? Yes, I definitely haven't got that multi map level. It's definitely patchy in places because this is acting like a normal napkin now. 
so maybe I should stick it down and then watercolour it and then multi matte over the top that might be a better idea That's the beauty of having a fine paintbrush. See, I don't think you could do this unless you sharpened your pencil every moment. I just don't think your pencils and fine liners would get in there. I think I may do another one, and I'll, I will, I will stick it down first. Um, I just need to change the colour of that just a little bit. That's a very pale colour. I thought the matte medium would soak through. That was my first thought. Uh, yeah, gu gouache is good because it's very flat, isn't it? Gouache is good. I was quite impressed with the fact I got my gouache in my little book of watercolours as well, um, which I can't find at the moment. I may have to just finish that leaf off because it's. not drawn properly but because it's a napkin it's uh, I do like that lemony green I have to say I like that so I'm going to take that all the way down I think I've just decided I think that's a flower yeah, I'm pretty sure that that's a flower it's not a leaf it's a flower Otherwise, there's too many leaves. I have to trim it when it's really dry then. Yeah, I used to use gouache when we were doing graphics years and years ago. Because it's a flat colour. And so we could use it for our lettering. But when I did graphic design, we had to do everything by hand. So it took us nearly a week to do a word. Ready for the printers. There was no cut, uh, there was cutting and pasting, but there was no um, typeface. We had to, everything that went to the printers, we drew by hand, which is probably why I can't do really free flowing designs. I had a wonderful teacher. And I can never remember his name. I can never pronounce his name, sorry. But he was an artist named Self Blessing, which I didn't realise until I found out that he died in 2011 at the uh, Jacob Cramer Art College, bless his socks. But he taught me to, to draw with a stick <laughs> and a pot of ink. But it makes you... Uh, it makes you think and it makes you draw correctly. It, it teaches you how to look, which is how I taught my girls to, to draw. They can draw better than I can now because I haven't drawn for years. I'm not sure if I want another pinky one. can't decide what colour to do that. Um, maybe a, a proper ready red. I don't have a ready red. That's why I was going today to the uh, the shop in Manchester, the art shop, and sell the hydras because they come in two packs. These and there aren't the right colours in any pack at all. Not true artist colours, like uh, we were talking earlier about having uh, a pinky blue, sorry, a, la a cool blue, um, a cool blue, and then a warm blue, so that you can get every purple you wanted. 
and the cool blues of the browns uh, and then the pinky reds the warm reds of the pinky reds and there for the purples and the cool reds with the and for the browns um, and you don't need hundreds of colours you just need about six as long as they blend well but good quality ones will blend well anyway so I'm kind of doing this a bit wishy-washy because it's not giving me the nice effect that the napkin did it's a shame that one's on its on its end because I really like that one I do like gouache um, I was colouring with it actually uh, but again I use it in the most boring way the same as I use this I, I tend to colour in exactly the same um, but the, because my little book that I have which I can't put my hand on at the moment because I'm not doing with it um, I'm going to drop some darker colour into that I think. now these were the hydras that I did today I dropped a drop of everyone in today on this side and on this side, I must have had the same idea a few months ago, or a few years ago, because I'm just add a drop of water to these colours, and they've instantly gone back to watercolours, and yet I haven't used them in a year or something. So that's why they work in my little book. They are on the plastic and they sit on top until I touch them with a damp brush, and then that brings them back to life. And that's what happens with all of them. That's why my, my little book works. Um, but I do tend to use the hydras, it's the only one I do, um, with the plastic palette, which is the... Let's see if I can find my book in a second. I just want to try and give this rose that little bit more... ...reality than just a flat, boring coloured rose. I do like the white background. I'll put it there. It'll just be about right. I do like the white background. I'll see if I can find my little book. Um, and I might not use gouache on that one, but I'll show you what it does on a napkin. Now bear with me two seconds. Let's see if I can find my little book. It was supposed to be handy, but I can't see it. Yes, I can. Let's see if I don't knock them, the headphones off. And the dogs were the little dog was wrapped around this in a second. Oh, so this is my little book. I'll pan out a little bit and then see if that makes it a bit better. I don't know if you've seen my little book. I found it. <laughs> it's so boring, you can't often see it. My little book has almost 500 colours in it. And I keep telling myself I wanted to put all the hydras, and I think there's 100 in there. And there's about 100 and odd Caran d'Ache Neo Colour 2s. Um, so I have the Peerless. Um, but I, I got the idea from uh, David Cook in the 1980s. Uh, oh, there's my. I've stuck that in the back because I just wanted to. Now that they're gouache, but they're um, Winsor and Newton gouache, and all I did is I took the tube, the top of the tube, and squiggled it round. And it's it's very badly cracked. So if I put it on the plastic, um, this is the photo book, then it probably wouldn't. Uh, and ha as I've shut it, that water. Uh, the, the gouache has stayed on there. So as an experiment, get some clean water and retouch that green. Now that's gouache on that was wet. That's just and uh, so if I now bring my little book, but I oh, little book. My serviette. I've been watercolouring. I've got to be a little bit careful because I've got a water pot down there and I'm terrible for making mistakes. So 
if I just touch now this is working completely different to working with other watercolors because this is the flat color and they are quite dry completely different to working in the other thing I've just been doing because that was under multi-mat so the brush is still damp and I'm going to shorter the line I hope you can see that watch it down a little bit more but you have to be really careful because this is a single layer of napkin that's a, a leaf so they do it does work you can't get it uh, to to be more traditional watercolours like the others but um, that's one watercoloured one there so it does work but the gouache is quite nice um, but I have all these watercolours there's a, the Tambay Gansi watercolours excuse me no, the, the Tirukati. Oh. it. It's tear cake, isn't it? Yes. Uh, Tirukati. I can't say it. Sorry, I'm not very well today. I'll see it in a minute. Kirataki Ganzai Tambi watercolours. I've labelled it. <laughs> um, they're fab. Yeah, well, gouache is made to be flat, isn't it? Now, this is my first attempt at putting a drop of the um, hydras. And then I decided to be a little bit bolder, and I put it in here, and I used it as a traditional watercolour. And then when I shut it, of course, I had it the same on one side as the other. But if I reconstitute this, that red, that's identical to using this little palette here. It took about a day to dry. Uh, and that's how I did the napkin. In fact, if I go into this one, that's the orange that I did, the, that's the orange that I was trying to make. So that's the orange that I made um, for that particular flower. So I can. Sorry. Somebody's getting comfortable in their dog bed. <laughs> I apologise for that. So if I show you this one. And there obviously isn't any matte medium on that bit. it's reacting the same way but the hydra <laughs> the hydras just reconstitute themselves back into watercolor almost immediately and because they're so vibrant you just need a drop of water I work with a very damp brush but that's why on some of them I can't tell whether it's hydras it's peerless it's it's uh, derwent it's Caran d'Ache, near colour twos. You could, the only one that you can tell the difference, and, th and that's the beauty of the way I work, is I can have, I won't do it with this one, because I want all these to be the same. But normally, yeah, they're fab, aren't they? They're about five pounds in England four or five pounds, sorry, the little dog has decided he wants to come and sit on my paper. Um, they are fab. I mean, you, 
then I've never used them that vibrant. This is how vibrant they are. Have a look on YouTube and um, if you look for the Hydra's Fine Art Watercolours, you will find sorry you will find I just have to just move this paper because uh, do you think you're going to do that all day I have a cavalier two-year-old who sits under my desk um, tearing papers up that I drop <laughs> sorry about that he's gone off now because there's nothing else he's bored yeah, the hydras are fab, but these ladies do watercolours in these colours. They don't water them down, and they are amazing. Absolutely amazing. There is a, a lady on the hydras website, and there's some YouTube videos on that, short ones. She demonstrates how to use them, but yeah, I should go have a look at them. Because you can use these, you can get any effect you want. Um, they're even more vibrant than the Derwent Ink Tents, and they, the Derwent are fab. I love the Derwent. But the way I, I work with this little book is I might do a pink flower and then I'll think, well, I want a green now. Um, I want a green. Um, there's some metallic Caran d'Ache there. Um, these are the Caran d'Ache Neo Color 2s. I don't, don't, too bright, don't want that color. Um, there's some more watercolors. The only ones I don't mix together are the graphite tint because they are very muted colours. Um, and then they have the ink tents Derwent all 72. But I might decide that I wanted a pink hydras and then I will, uh, if I'm in the car, I will then touch um, this green and think, right, well, um, I want to do this petal, this green, and that was one of the most amazing things that I've I've had this for a couple of years now, three years before, but I wouldn't have ever thought of getting out the seventy-two pencils and looking for a green, and then getting out the bottles of hydras and picking out the pink, and then the next colour, the stem. I might use a brown from the peerless. Um, I'm really sorry he's having his moment. So I love the fact that I'm using um, basically a suitcase. Um, I have the wooden box for the um, the pencils and I couldn't get the box out because it hurts my hands to open it now. I have to get the kids to do it. So there's about uh, a suitcase, a small suitcase of colours in there and I always think I've got five to six hundred when I get all the colours in um, but then if you look at the scale you have a, a scale of colour there's about ten different ones there's probably twenty but if we say there's ten that means that there's five thousand colours in there and I just think that's even with, that's without mixing anything if you mix them <laughs> there's a million or so but uh, 5,000 colours just with a water brush so I just think that is just fab <laughs> I'm going to do went later in the year to the pencil factory and I'm going to tell them about the book to say can't you make one with squares um, so people can get their own colours and fill them in rather than buying other things because if you had uh, seven, all the Derwent pencils you just have a little thin book, that thin. And there's hundreds of colours there. So that's my, my, my rant. I may have to go rescue what my do dog's stolen. So just bear with me two seconds. Oh, you've looked on a catalogue and they they don't have any. Oh yeah, it's 500. Yes, 500. Just short of 500. There's, um, there's uh, Caran d'Ache, Peerless, Caran d'Ache, Metallic, Caran d'Ache Neo Color 2, Derwent Watercolor Pencil, 72 Derwent Ink Tense, 24 Derwent Graphite Tint, 30 Dr. Mitra's Hydras, but I've got a few more, um, 12 Derwent Sketching Pencils, Aqua, uh, General Sketching Watercolor Wash Pencils, they're the black ones, which I love. Oh, and that does, yes, I've got, um, what do they call these? 
Again, I saw, I found these in my stash, which I'd forgotten about. The Faber Castell Aqua Sticks, and if they're water-based, I scribbled squares, so they're in there as well. Yeah, it's fab. I, I, I really think it would put Derwent back at, back on the map again. So I say when I go to the pencil factory, um, I've got the Kurataki Ganzai Tambi in there as well, and I love those. They are wonderful, but they it's in a it's in a square box, which is fab, but it's so difficult, so difficult to carry around with you. Um, and then the Peerless, the Peerless gave me the idea for the squares, but originally David Cook did uh, a wildlife artist who demonstrated. I'll have to j just bear with me two seconds. My puppy's just stolen something and he's ripping it to shreds. I'll be back in a second. Sorry about that. What a rat bag. <laughs> He's looking at me going, but I was being good. Oh dear. He's got bored and normally the girls take him out, but say they're going to see the grandma who's 90. I think she's 94 this time. So, uh, and I haven't been very well. I've been in bed for a few days of cold, so, uh, or flu bug or something. So I've, um, I didn't want to go to see, I wanted to go see grandma, but I, could, I didn't go take her to this, this bug. It'd be very good for her. Um, now he's going to go take something else. Now. I would. We have. He has about four tennis balls in shreds. Um, he's got lots of chewy toys, and he wants to chew anything out of my craft room. He can get his little hands on. <laughs> right back. Yeah. So I'm going to do. I'm going to go to see. Uh, I'm going to see Derwin and tell him about this. But I was saying in the. Oh, excuse me. Just have to have a drink. In the 1980s, a di um, an art wildlife artist called David Cook um, made a video about how he used the Derwent watercolour pencils. And these are the old ones that say Rexel, because originally they keep changing the name. But So he has the Rexel, these original ones. Um, these are very old. Um, and I've, I keep watching this video, and I'm hoping that they'll take the video into into a DVD rather than a video, but uh, um, that was another demonstration I was going to do. So perhaps on Tuesday, uh, when I do my normal stream, <laughs> yeah, the scratch, the won't scratch the poles. No, no, he's a terror. Um, I think that's why he was kicked out. It's because he's a terror, but he wasn't trained as a puppy. Um, but he's a King Charles Spaniel, and it's the cutest little thing you've ever seen. Uh, I um, uh, yeah until he, annoy, he anno annoys the old we have an old Heinz 57 terrier thing who must be about 12 14 um, and he's grumpy because he just wants to sleep all day because he's very very old um, <laughs> so I do apologize it's a bit of a madhouse so I was saying that David Cook made this video of how he used the pencils and he said that he would get his sketchbook and I'm, I say I might do this as a demonstration. I'll watch the video, and I'll demonstrate everything you can do with a Derwent pencil, which is amazing. You probably won't want anything else when you've got these. And what he did was, at the back of his sketchbook, he said that instead of taking his sketchbook out, he went to the, this is an old one. He went to the back of his sketchbook, and he took the colours that he thinks he might want to use, and he made coloured squares. And that's all he did. And then he would take uh, another. Dif this is a different. Along the way, I've kind of rescued quite a few different ones, so to show you some. And then he said that from here, I think he had um, like a Payne's grey. There's a, 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 there's another pencil uh, and a couple of browns. And you can take your colour, and do your water sketch. 
or you can blend and do some sketching and it he's <laughs> yes he does he's a rat bag normally he said the children have it he stood there now just looking about what can I do naughty next can't do anything good got to do I'm bored yep he's just tried to catch a fly now he's trying to annoy the old the other old dog we have which is a lurcher he's trying to jump on her and chew his t chew her tail anything to be naughty I just can't understand it so I was saying <laughs> so I'll, I'll I'll do that on Tuesday I'll I'll show the video and I will um, I'll see if I can show little bits of it um, but I want to ask Derwent oh Alfie come here good boy be a good boy no I think we're gonna lose our peace and quiet now um, because my girls know take him away so um, I will go through the video and I'll do that on Tuesday when I do my normal str stream about how he used the, the pencils and, and he used them in so many different ways um, but I do love my little book but he gave me the idea and then Peerless came out as well um, and I'll show how I watercolour so I, as I say I'll use one, an orange for one colour and because there's a paper um, this is from the original one that I made that was a bit tatty so I bought this from Paper Chase it was one pound fifty, and um, I basically, if you bear with me two seconds, no, he's going to be naughty. Alfie, um, I even made a tiny diddy one to go into my little mini filofax, so that you can touch the colours. And you can watercolour. Do a little sketch or I actually did it because my my file of is really boring. Um and I wanted to, to kind of brighten it up a bit and draw some doodles around it, put some colour in it. So I made a diddy one. Uh, obviously you don't have so much watercolour on there. But that's what gave me the idea to make the little book. Um uh, and I decided to label them because there's now hundreds in here as well. But if I had the, I think there's a hundred and some Caran d'Ache. And there's a hundred Hydras. So that will take me over the 600. Uh, which in that little A6 A book I thought was a bit, a bit good. I used to have, um, I have a, a rubber band over it because my hands don't work well. And then I will take a sketchbook. I don't normally do a lot of sketching now because my hands hurt and I don't have any patience so I take um, a little colouring book I've been doing some watercolours and so I've uh, these I bought from the pound shop so I can have this and it'll keep me quiet in the car when everybody goes shopping and it normally fits in my handbag. In fact, it goes everywhere with me. It's been all over Europe. I've, I've had it. The original way I used to work with the Caran d'Ache for years. But I wanted to show you how, how vibrant they are. Um, I keep losing my little books. I had everything sorted until I decided to move everything around. Um, when I put the Ga Ganzai Tanby watercolours in the book, I used one paintbrush and made the daubs of colour. And then I ended up with um, 26 pages of designs purely from one paintbrush of colour. I know that doesn't sound, doesn't sound right, but... <laughs> Just bear with me, I don't know if I've... Uh... And that's the wrong book. That was from the pound shop as well. I thought that was really, really nice. But there's no way I could get in there with a with a paint... Uh, in those little tiny marks in there. Uh, with with a, br um, a pencil. So, um, the only markers I do use... I do use some markers. They're actually my daughter's. I use... Um, the chameleon because they blend themselves and I only have to take a pen top off once and they're so easy and quick to use 
so I did I, I do use that marker but that's the only one I can use my husband brought me some Prisma colors and I can't use them because I just cannot um, hold them I did one design and my hands were aching for days because I have arthritis and so that could put the end to that um, oh I have to show you this my daughter the, my daughter uh, was given my Prisma colors and she did that she put me to shame straight away <laughs> and she's not doing art either she's not doing art so I was a bit I taught her very well though I have to say these were the um, with my little book in the car this this was from my watercolour book so I've used it and used it and used it and it's still got lots of colour in it these this was from the um, I can put that down so I sat in the car and did that one I think because um, if I'm not very well sometimes I can't get off the sofa my asthma's bad I just have to sit quiet so these are the graffiti tint derwent um, and so I used these to colour that in. That's what they do. They mute the colour down to a grayscale. But they're really, I love that. They're almost like a watercolour. Um, that was using the Karen, the Ganzai Tambi watercolours straight from the pan. And then these were used using them from my. Oh, these are the, these are the ones. These are the 20 pages that I got from um, putting the colour in the Ganzai Tambi watercolours. I had a fairly large brush and I, it was an experiment again and I got the large brush and I daubed the, they come in little pans, oh sorry, they come in large pans and I daubed them up and then I squeezed and kind of tried to twist out as much colour as I could to make little fat puddles sitting on sketchbook paper, the same sketchbook paper that I'm working on today. Um, and then I used these exactly the same way. But when I'd finished I had a paintbrush full of, p of paint and it, when you're doing the colour swatches on these, instead of washing the paintbrush out, I decided the first six I did were the pinks and the reds. So I decided that I would use a colour I'd never coloured in before and I thought I want to have a go and I want to find, um, so that was the yellows and all I did was dip, when the brush went too dry I dipped it just gently, just the tip in the water to get some more water and the water then went back into the end of the paintbrush and I, I ended up colouring in 20 pages from the 36, I had 36 colours in the Ganzai Tambi watercolours and from those 36 that was from the reds and the pinks. So the Ganzai Tambi watercolours are very 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 pigmented. It took me all day but I just could not wash the colour away. I just could not wash all that colour away that's the red that it started and when it went dry I put some water to it and I got another colour and then all those colours are from that and that's the other thing that taught me is that there was that colour that one and another one if you bear with me I'll find it so never think when you're making colour swatches to throw the water away the colour that's in your paintbrush because there's tons and tons of colour that you're just washing down the drain and as a tight Yorkshire lass so I sat there and decided, well I know what I'm going to do. I made a video of it, it wasn't very good because it was 3 o'clock in the morning. But I, I made a video of how I did it. Um, can't find, ah there's the pinks. So there are six colours there, six paintbrushes. But it also ta taught me that from each pan I've got hundreds of pinks. So, as I say, that w that those two were from just the six, the first six reds, and I didn't waste those six reds there. That you see, are a combination of water. I don't know if I've explained that right, but I just kept dipping the pre the end of the pet the brush into water, and just kept going and going and going until it almost disappeared, 
um, but there are some really pale I just kept going until it almost disappeared well it did disappear I wanted to get every scrap so that was the first pink that was the first red which I think is that one and then it probably ends up that pale so that's from six paintbrushes full and I ended up with 20 pages in the end they were the yellows um, they were the greens and the purples and then in the end I washed the brush out and started sc really scrubbing it I think these are the final colours I got and they're very pale there were some more pale pinks they were the vibrant oranges um, so you can get an awful lot of colour out of something this was one of the first colour pages that I did when I was out that all those colours are from my little book and I can't tell you what's what there will be ink tents there will be Caran d'Ache and again I find that really strange that um, you can from this book you can swap one colour and put it next to another colour of a different medium well it's a, it's a water based medium but it could be a pencil it could be a crayon and you'd never think to do that in reality with all your paints out I don't think you'd get all this lot on a desk but you wouldn't certainly dig to the bottom of your Derwent pencil box um, and pull two trays out and get the lemon out to then go to your your hydras and think oh well I'll have a blue and I'll, I'll take that blue and that yellow and I'll make a green and I'll put that green next to that flower to make a green leaf but of course in my little book you can do that instantly by just flicking so as I say I'm, I'm going to go to see Derwent to see if they'll take it on board and start using it because it belongs to Derwent it was Derwent's idea 30 or 35 years ago so we need to give it back to Derwent so, but that was th those colours were from I do apologise I don't know why the dogs have decided to bark um, I'm really sorry I can't. so they were those were the colours um, that were there so that's what I'll do for next time if that's okay I shall go through my little book and I will show uh, how um, David Cook gave me the idea and then there was the peerless and then I think Jenny Belly did one uh, on YouTube she did um, one when she was going on holiday um, but um, it all stems from water colouring and Derwent so uh, I hope that's what I'll do on Tuesday I'll, I'll go through the Derwent pencils um, and I may even start to make another one because my daughter's going to uni and she's doing illustration and animation um, that's why she has the um, the pens she has the she has the pens but I wanted to show and I can't find it because I photocopy everything um, I don't know why I can't find it but I tend to photocopy everything because I can't work in a book um, because I can't turn I can manage to turn a page um, I turn a page over but I can't manage to then struggle with a book when it's opened oh that's brilliant so um, because I'm waffling on I, I apologize I do waffle a lot I'll stop the video for YouTube uh, and 